Hi, I'm Shweta. This is a true story. This is my story and this story is titled Sunday Mornings in Doggy Dog World. What is a doggy dog world? One of my favorite moments in the sitcom Modern Family is when Jay Pritchett, the patriarch, points out to his Colombian-born wife, Gloria, that she is pronouncing it wrong. It's not a doggy dog world, it is a dog eat dog world. <laughs> she counters, who wants to live in a world where dogs eat each other? Doggy dog world is a beautiful world filled with little puppies. My 2017 began with a customary annual girls trip to Goa with my close friends. We rented a couple of lovely rooms in Palulem, the rooms which were a little ways behind the beach and the road tended to be unlit in the night. One such night when two of my girlfriends and I were making our tottering, buzzed way back to our rooms, we encountered three angry dogs guarding the compound to our rooms. The owner had unleashed these dogs and turned off the lights. All three of us were really, really scared of these growling canines who were just not letting us in. But I was the only one to turn back and run. I, run, I ran all the way back to the beach. I uh, ran with the keys to our room, leaving my roommate behind. Eventually, we were let in and no one was hurt. And today, my friends graciously joke about it. But even today, I feel ashamed about abandoning my friends to a presumably dangerous situation. When I'm self-deprecating, there are times, I like to say that I'm scared of everything except for heights and water. Uh, oh, if I had to list the things that I'm afraid of, bugs, dark alleys, dining alone, making a fool of myself, failure, cockroaches, roller coasters, driving, love. It's a never ending list. Dogs also make this list. <laughs> also, I come from a family that generally doesn't like pets and actively fears dogs and other animals. Uh, my childhood did have some interactions with dogs which were positive, but they were very few and far in between. And now, if I think of them, all of them are somehow tinged with fear. And with dogs, a lot of my fears are very irrational, but very, very real. For the longest time, I thought of dogs as these unpredictable creatures whom I simply could not understand and who could turn on me and attack me at any point of time. Half of my fears were and still are inherited and the other half are because of uh, a couple of truly terrifying but eventually harmless experiences in the past. For example, I was once this close to my face being ripped off by my college friend's German Shepherd. The outcome of all this was when I saw a pooch coming my way, my heart rate would go up and my palms would start sweating. The word danger would flash in my mind in huge red letters and I would try to remember all the pieces of advice my friends had given me. Keep head down. Do not show fear, like that advice works. Do not maintain eye contact. Do not run. I wouldn't admit this to anyone, of course. Who wants to be the boob who's afraid of a dog? It was an embarrassing secret. I'd only reveal when forced to, like when I was inches away from the snarling face of a German shepherd and about to pee my pants. The approaching dog, of course, would always sense my fear. My fear of dogs used to be so huge, capital letters huge, that I wondered how all the dogs in the area could not smell me. But anyway, this approaching dog would almost in all times come to me, try to sniff me. I think most of the times they just wanted to reassure me but I wouldn't know because by that time I'd be gone. 
capital letters gone. I would sometimes cross a wide street to avoid getting near a dog. Yeah, I was that girl. So why did I choose to act on my fear of dogs? Well, for one, it took me some honest reflection, but I realized that while I'm scared of dogs, I also like them a lot, maybe even love them. I used to describe my emotions for dogs as 50% love and 50% fear. Something told me that my, my, my life would be enriched by learning to love more and fear less. I started visiting with my friends and neighbors who were dog parents. I started visiting them and hanging out with them and their children. Uh, more often, I took it one dog interaction at a time. In this process, I met some amazing patient canine children. For starters, there was Toby, who I had seen from the day they brought him in when he was a little pupper shitting everywhere, who taught me that Labradors are actually extroverts who love to greet people they like with a sniff, a lick, and then by pretending to bite our hand. Then there was Bailey, a badass boxer who made me feel so welcome by licking my toes the first time ever she saw me. This process also involved unlearning many assumptions and prejudices and learning to trust my gut. I was pleasantly surprised to know that each dog is different with a unique personality and preferences. My friends were like, duh, did you not know that? Did you think all dogs were machines? And you know what? I actually did think something like that. I learned to identify some of the basic behavioral traits of canines, what it means when he shakes his tail, what it means when she nudges your hand with her snout. I learned that not all growls are the same and that there are playful growls and grunts. I saw that there is no feeling quite like quite as heartwarming as when a dog acknowledges you, saying, hmm, you're okay, I can be myself around you. My final big challenge in this game that I'd set up for myself was to visit a dog shelter. You see, by this time, my confidence had melted some of my fears and revealed a desire to be a dog mother someday. And it was natural to choose to adopt. But not now. Now I lived with my family and while I had changed, they had not. But I decided that I would go to a dog shelter and check it out. This wasn't my first experience with a dog shelter. I'd been there a few months ago with a friend. I went, I saw the place from the gate. I came back. I wasn't ready then, I guess. There were too many dogs. It was a small confined space with 15 to 20 strays who were too hyper and just jumping on all the humans over there. Um, I talked to a volunteer over there and tried to figure out a vague plan of coming back again. And she suggested that I'd get rabies vaccine shots. And that freaked me out even more. Fear of injections also. But I assessed my readiness now. I had had more one-on-one -on -one interactions with dogs. I was decidedly calmer around them. And so, with butterflies in my stomach, I stepped into a shelter on a warm Sunday morning in 2017. Are you looking to adopt a dog? A volunteer asked me. No, um, I can't do that right now. I'm actually scared of dogs. I thought I'd come down here and see how things go. I had not come to adopt. And that day, there was an adoption drive. So naturally, I felt a little embarrassed about admitting why I was there. I feared people would be like, if you're not adopting, why are you here? If you're scared of dogs, why are you here? Don't you see that there are so many dogs in need of parents? But to my surprise, this turned out to be a false preconceived notion too. 
everyone I talked to was really encouraging and helpful and even delighted that I was trying to do this. And the dogs, the dogs were just so happy to see so many humans. They were all over the place, inviting people in, sniffing them all over. One Doberman, Jesse, just would not stop sniffing my crotch for two whole minutes. So yeah, I felt welcome. <laughs> they were jumping on everyone. They were four biting their hands and some of the pups were trying to chew the sandals uh, of the humans. <laughs> I wasn't panicking then, but I was scared. Low-grade fear ebbed and flowed in waves and I was even more scared of showing that fear to the dogs. I stood very close to another woman who seemed to know her way around until the fear subsided. I took my time and in a while and over the next two hours, I petted, played with, cooed to, sang to the dogs. And there were dogs of so many kinds. There were Indies, Labs, Cocker Spaniels, St. Bernards, Mastiffs, Boxer. I learned their names and what brought them here. I learned their stories, physical deformities because of inbreeding, abandonment, death of the owner. I also talked to the fellow humans who were there and I learned their stories, how it felt to raise cats and dogs, how it felt to come to a shelter after losing a beloved pet of 15 years. I went back to the shelter most Sundays for the better half of the year, learning to differentiate between breeds, learning to bathe them and clean up after them, learning how they learn to love even after suffering from immense trauma from humans. Fear is a weird thing, isn't it? We all have huge fears and yet we hesitate to be authentic about them. We see others doing stuff that we are afraid to do and we think that they don't have that fear. We only overcome certain fears in our lives when the cost of living with it becomes too high. We organize our lives around this fear so that we don't have to do those things. Even thinking about how we are scared is scary. So we rationalize them, figuring out neat and logical explanations as to why we don't even want it in the first place. While it would be too dramatic for me to say that I came out of that shelter a changed person, the experience did have a very powerful impact on me. Today, when I see my neighbor coming my way, walking his big, strong Indy, I don't turn back and take the longer route to my flat. I walk forward and I extend the back of my hand to the dog. I let him sniff me. I let him tell me whether he likes me or not before petting him. And if he jumps up on me, well, that just means that he likes me very much and I'm okay with that.